Kaleidoscope was presented by Paul Vaughan and produced by Anne Winder. The reader was Patience Tomlinson. Now the weather forecast for tomorrow. Most parts of England and Wales will be dry with sunny periods after a few early fog patches. Sea fog may persist, however, near some western coasts. Cloud will increase over northern England, but most parts will remain dry. Southern Scotland and Northern Ireland will start rather cloudy with perhaps a little rain, but it'll become dry with some sunshine. Northern Scotland will have sunny intervals, but there will be a few showers in the far north. It'll be rather warm again in the south, but northern areas will be cooler. And the outlook for the weekend, dry and rather warm in most parts with some sunshine, in eastern England, cooler and more cloudy at times. And that's the weather. Radio 4, it's 10 o'clock. The World Tonight, this is John Morgan. Good evening. First, the news headlines. With Mr Alexander Haig on his way to Buenos Aires again, some Argentine warships are reported to have left harbour. The National Union of Teachers is to campaign for the abolition of caning in schools. And no bending the rules for Björn Borg if he wants to play at Wimbledon. Later in tonight's programme, in today's nervous calm in the Falklands crisis, we look at a remarkable poll being published tomorrow about British attitudes to war and to our political leaders. We also hope to hear from the American Congress, from a British admiral, and from Argentina on their view of the war. We have a first-hand account of life today in Poland, that neglected tragedy, and from the Middle East, where the clouds grow dark. We celebrate the India Festival in music and verse. We hear why Bjorn Borg has to qualify for Wimbledon, and as the New Statesman tomorrow appoints a new editor, I offer some sentimental memories of the staggers that was. And now with the news in detail, Brian Martin. The American Secretary of State, Mr Alexander Haig, is expected to arrive in Buenos Aires in the next few hours for the most crucial stage of his long-distance attempt to settle the Falklands crisis without bloodshed. On his way from Washington, he is reported to have stopped briefly at Caracas for talks about the dispute with officials of the Venezuelan government, which has backed Argentina's sovereignty claim over the islands. While the diplomatic efforts to solve the crisis continue, there have been reports of fresh military activity. The Ministry of Defence in London said elements of the Argentine Navy might be preparing to sail. Military sources in Buenos Aires said some ships had left port. Mrs Thatcher spent more than two hours today being briefed by Chiefs of Staff at the Ministry of Defence. With a report on developments there, here's our defence correspondent, Christopher Lee. A ministry spokesman said that there were signs that some ships of the Argentine fleet were ready to leave harbour, and there is a report that some have. But the ministry spokesman said it was believed that the Argentine vessels would sail southwards and that they would not attempt to breach the maritime exclusion zone. So why should they leave port? Well, the defence ministry believes that the Argentine Navy is putting on a propaganda display, not for the Royal Navy, but for the Argentine people, to bolster morale, said the spokesman. Certainly the Argentine government would not wish to give the impression that its navy is hiding in port. At the same time, the fleet commander will want to get his ships to sea so that they might test their systems. In London, the ministry is suggesting that the Argentine Navy would not risk a clash inside the 200-mile zone. However, that zone does not cover the island of South Georgia, and in theory, there's no reason why the Argentine ships shouldn't head in that direction. And that's one reason the Defence Ministry spokesman was keen to say we are keeping a close watch on the situation. Mr Haig's arrival in Argentina is being anxiously awaited. The people and the government in Buenos Aires are said to believe that it's the last chance of averting a military struggle. From Buenos Aires, here's Joe Paley. As a measure of Argentina's concern at the lack of progress in these negotiations, the state radio and television stations are being careful not to make broadcasts hostile to Britain. Mr Haig is coming here at the government's request. He telephoned them from Washington, outlined his new ideas, and was told it would certainly be worth returning to Buenos Aires, in spite of President Galtieri's refusal to budge, which he made clear in his speech last night. There's a very strong feeling here that if this visit by Mr Haig doesn't do the trick, then nothing will, and the two countries will just slide into war. Military sources here say that some Argentine warships, only some, have left port and are sailing along the coast. But any suggestion that the Argentine fleet has set sail is quite wrong. This may be Argentina's way of cheering up her people by showing them that their navy is not being frightened into staying in port. 
The Deputy Governor of the Falkland Islands, Mr Dick Baker, arrived at Gatwick Airport this afternoon with more than 30 islanders who'd been forced to leave by the Argentine forces. As he put it, he'd been given the order of the boot. At a news conference, Mr Baker spoke about morale in the islands. Morale amongst Falkland Islanders is very good indeed. Morale amongst the occupying forces I'm not so sure about. Uh, there is a certain amount of freedom to come and go among the population, but as you can imagine, with a military operation, a military occupation, there are a number of areas that people can't go into. Is there any resistance? There is what you might call passive resistance. What we've been trying to do, while well, I've been there anyway, is to maintain the essential services which are required for the normal life of the islands to go on. In other words, to do anything which is good for the Falkland Islanders. Is there any active resistance? No, I don't think so. I think active resistance at this stage would be very difficult to envisage. Mr Baker added that he believed the island's beaches had been mined. Argentine troops had been seen digging holes, and he said it would be foolish to assume otherwise. The Falklands police chief, Mr Ronnie Lamb, arrived at Gatwick wearing a kilt and full Highland dress. He carried in one hand a pebble from the invasion beach and in the other a Union Jack, the last to fly over the islands. The Foreign Secretary, Mr Francis Pym, will shortly be broadcasting a message to the people of the Falkland Islands on the BBC's World Service. In his message, he says that Britain is very concerned at the deportation of senior officials and administrators and that Britain is renewing efforts to get an international Red Cross presence on the islands. He says the government, supported by other parties, believe the wish of the people of the Falkland Islands are what the, government, the argument is all about. As to the future government of the islands, he says he doesn't know what the islanders will want after this traumatic experience, but if they want something different, Britain is not going to stand in their way. Mr Pym ends by saying, keep your spirits up, we will do our best. World opinion is behind us, and we will try to get the Argentinian forces to withdraw. Other news now. The American Deputy Secretary of State, Mr Walter Stessel, has said he's optimistic about resolving the differences between Israel and Egypt, which might delay Israel's final withdrawal from the Sinai. After his first meeting with, with Prime Minister Begin to discuss Israel's claim that Egypt has violated the 1979 peace agreement, Mr Stessel said the discussions had been good, friendly and fair. He is expected to fly on to Cairo tomorrow. The differences between Egypt and Israel were also discussed today at a meeting in Cairo between President Mubarak and the Israeli Defence Minister, Mr Ariel Sharon. Mr Sharon has now flown back to Israel to report to Prime Minister Begin. A spokesman for President Mubarak said the Israelis had not yet promised to withdraw from the Sinai on time. <laughs>